mathematics and specifically statistics, root mean square of any set of values is used to find the average of numbers when you only want to worry about the magnitude and not the sign. Now let's look at two sets of values. In my first set, I have 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. In my second set, I have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. I want to take the average of or find the average of this set and this set. Well, I add up all my values, divide them by 5, and get 6 over 5. And the same thing for this guy. Negative 1, negative, one, uh, negative 2 minus negative 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 <coughs> divided by 5. Well, these guys cancel and I get 0. Now look, in this set, all my numbers have the same magnitude as these guys. But in this set, these first two numbers have the same magnitude as these first two numbers, but different signs. And that's why my average is 0. So in some cases, this type of average won't make sense. Now from a physics perspective, let's look at moving cars. Suppose a car is traveling in this direction at 60 miles per hour. And suppose in this direction is a positive direction. Now suppose another car is also traveling 60 miles per hour, but in the other direction. So it's negative 60, where 60 is our magnitude and the direction is our negative sign. So if someone asks you, what is the average of the first two cars, from a physics perspective, you will say 60 miles per hour. Because if one car is going 60 and the other car is going 60, then the average must be 60. Well, if you use the formula to find the average from a mathematics point of view, you will see that it's 60 plus minus 60 gives you 0 divided by 2, which is 0. So for sometimes, from a mathematics point of view, taking the average in the same way that you did here doesn't make sense. Because in the real world, if you have two cars traveling at some speed and you take their average, how can their average be 0? So that's where the root mean square formula comes from. What this formula does is it takes away these negatives and gives you the value of this type of average without the negatives. So let's look at the formula. VRMS is equal to, you take the squares of every single velocity or every single value and then you divide that by n. So almost the same thing as you, get, uh, as you did here except you square every value. The reason you square every value is because a square will take away that negative sign. And then you divide by n, and you take the square root of that. So this will always give you a positive value. So let's take this example, and let's use these two values to find our average. So VRMS is equal to 60 miles per hour squared plus negative 60 miles per hour squared. This gives you 3,600 plus negative cancel, so 3,600 gives you 7,200 divided by 2 and square root that gives you 60 miles per hour. So, you see once again that the purpose of the root mean square is to take away those negative signs and just give you the magnitude. And this becomes useful when you're talking about velocities. Because if a molecule is traveling with one velocity this way, and another molecule is traveling with the same velocity but different uh, direction the other way, you want to take those averages, and you want those averages to give you a positive value, not zero. That's exactly why you use root mean square velocity. So you see that this guy gives you 60 just like it would from a logical physics perspective. From a pure mathematical perspective, it gives you zero if you use the formula. Now, one last thing I want to mention is that this definition of velocity is not actually correct. Because remember, velocity is a vector. That means it has both magnitude and direction. While speed is a scalar, it only has magnitude. Now, this velocity only has magnitude. It doesn't have direction. Because when we take the square root, we can't get a negative, so we always get positive. So VRMS is not the velocity, it's the root mean square speed. Because our velocity, this guy, is actually our speed. It only has magnitude. 
So this guy is a scalar. 